I had a show at the African American Museum and this is one of the pieces I put in. At this time, South Street was just starting to get uh, gentrified. They were just starting to pull down the old buildings uh, on South Street and on Bainbridge Street. I have, I have a couple of pieces I'm working on now that sort of relate to that time. Once again, it was a much different place. I remember when on Pine Street, those houses on Pine Street, I could have got one of those bad boys for twelve or thirteen thousand dollars. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, could have got something up there in Mount Airy, boy, for twelve thousand. I had a friend of mine had a house, three fireplaces, three floors, and whatnot, big, twelve thousand dollars. You know. So at any rate, housing. This thing combines a lot of st different things into it. It's really compressed. Like I said. It's not like one of my paintings is spread out. It's comp compressed and folded. It's the sort of thing you have to really look at. I did these things really originally, were really more for about, I was still in education. I was doing a lot of stuff about black history and, 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 and trying to get, to get children's curiosity to wonder about what was going on in their environment and what was happening with them. And, uh, I found that when I, with the shows I had like these, adults would sort of uh, come by and look, you know, and, and keep going and whatnot. But kids would get into, hey, what's that? Hey, come over here. You know, and they, hey, y'all. <laughs> you know, and they'd really get involved in it and whatnot and really look at my work and, and, and talk about it. And, and, and express what they felt about it in a very open way because, you know, yeah, it, black teenagers, they're not worried about hurting your feelings and nothing. They're just, they're just talking, you know, and expressing it. So I'd get to really hear some real things and whatnot and understand that they, they, they got it and appreciated my work at, a, at another level where I didn't have to be so literal or things like that. They were able to say, oh, that means, and start, and, and start interpreting it and translating it, which is what I want people to do with my work. It's translated on their own uh, thing, but not bring your own experience to it, like this called call and response. I'm not trying to be a didactic person or whatnot. I always try to make sure there's a bunch of ambiguity in my work because I have a lot of ambiguity in my life, you know, about what is and what is not and why and why is it not. And, you know, what is old age, and what is life, and what is time. I try to squ squish all of that into my pieces or whatnot for us to always to think about and contemplate because I don't want my work to be sh purely decorative or just something that's like, oh, it's, that's one of the reasons why I don't make these literal. I'm not trying to make, uh, what's his name, William Christenberry makes these very accurate southern houses and photographs, which I've greatly admired. I've seen, his, I've gone to see his shows and whatnot. But as I say, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to give you some literal photograph or thing of, of Philadelphia situation. I'm trying to give you a much more emotional thing. I want, I want you to feel like this about you would like a really hip song when you first fell in love, that first dance you had or whatever, you know. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing, you know, to get that sort of number. I, I feel like that's what art should do anyway, is sort of give you that kind of feeling. You don't have to be necessarily know why you feel that way. Like sometimes some songs or whatnot. There's a lot of songs I hate because they're once songs I heard in my teenage life and I figured I was just as goofy as I could be. Those songs make me mad when I hear them. I remember how much I thought I'd do while Anyway, never mind. Over to this one. This will bring back too many memories. <laughs> I'm more of an ancestor worshiper, so to my grandparents and parents and whatnot, and other ancestors, I hold in very much high esteem and whatnot, and, and still in a lot of ways feel responsible to them, and that's why I have to keep doing this work and try to give it my, my all for that, because they sure didn't want me to be an artist. That's the first thing. And so I always feel like the people I really want to prove this to most are no longer here. Not even some, my peers or whatnot. Most of the buddies, the guys I came with, they're all gone too. You know. So it's, so I, when I share this, I share this with an audience bigger than 
you, it's more of a, I don't know. But there's another audience that I, I'm sort of addressing and the guys I hung up out with and the people, the, the church I grew up in, St. Cyprian's Episcopal Church, such wonderful people. I feel so grateful for the time I grew up and where I grew up in a little suburban neighborhood it was really neat for me. Very diversified. I did not grow up in some little segregated neighborhood. I, there were more diversified people and this was during the Second World War. It was a place where Philadelphia had nothing but jobs and everybody was working and everybody was active. So I'm fortunate in that respect. And I'm at the age where I, I grew up so I avoided, I avoided, just got out of the depression was too young for the war, was able to escape through the Korean battle, you know, and avoid the Vietnam War, and grow up at a time where there were, where there was the greatest opportunity for somebody that there was, because there were fewer men, because people were at war and things like that, there were lower male population. So I'm a lucky person in a lot of ways, and people who grew up at my time, I was born in 1937, it's hard because those things were times were difficult and whatnot, but I, I'm a historian and I read a lot and I try, I try to look at my life and try to look at things in my art in terms of his, a historical perspective and a much broader perspective than just my own uh, life or anything like that. And, I, and that's I try to make my work transcendental in that respect. And I'm not trying to talk about today or make a poster or anything like that. I'm trying to deal with deeper issues and whatnot. So this is a piece that just shows some of the ancestral history that we don't know. America spent 400 years denying its history. You know, pretending it never happened and, and nobody knows why or whatnot. There's a lot of people, you know, and for there's still a whole bunch of artists, aside from just singers and dancers, who still have lots to express about their experience and how it affected them and whatnot. I just saw a thing, I get Wired magazine. But one of the things about uh, pain and whatnot being transferred genetically through generations and things like that. So that means we're all suffering from post-traumatic stress. And in a lot of ways, we all need art and, and some sort of way to express and, and, and release for ourselves and whatnot. And some of us are better able to do that than others, and we need to really respect them more. I wish, I believe that schools should be, have more art and more things like that, because we need more younger people who are able to express themselves in some ways other than violence. And if you don't give people a voice in order to speak at one, some point, then it seems like that's what it ends up being and whatnot. And so, we don't, so we need more art and we need more voices to talk about that in the various different ways. So this is just my way. I'm big on, let's say, mixed media found objects. I love using cardboard and easy, cheaper materials and whatnot. Like an alchemist trying to put value into this and repurpose it, recycle it restore it, you know, recover it, and whatnot. That's how we, I, I feel like, once again, we should be feeling like that about our environment and whatnot. So that's why I like to using stuff that you have to pick up and restore and recycle, repurpose, you know, and in some ways it's environmental and trying to be green and whatnot, and, and use the materials in a respectful way and not just keep throwing everything away and discarding it. So to me, this is just one way of, of trying to state all those things in the work that I do about how important all these issues are for all of us. And that art, to me, as, a, as an artist, I feel like that's the, the voice I want to have as an artist when I'm involved. I'm, I'm trying to work on a program now to work with, uh, with clay. Philadelphia has a big history in clay that people aren't aware of. And we really could work in, and, and engage young people in the history of this, this city. This is the first city. It's the richest in, in history and whatnot. We should have archaeological digs all over the place. We should have art projects all the time. I wish we had our stadiums open for us to have art, big, big art fairs and whatnot. Oh, they give us a little, oh, Rittenhouse Square. Give me a break. I want the stadium. You know, there's a bunch of artists. We could fill that bad boy up. I believe that. Yeah, but I think with things like that, I think that artists need, I'm still, Marshall's, 
we need to be more activists, we need to be more involved, we need to support the arts because they're as important as anything else is in our society and in our culture. It really is. Anyway, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good.